Live from CBS4, this is your News Now. And our weather this evening, certainly still very cold out there, but we are beginning to see improvement. Those temperatures yesterday peaked at about one degree, but we have made it into the teens, mid teens. In fact, we sit around 14 downtown, a little bit warmer if you're farther south and west and just a tad cooler a bit farther north. But again, a big improvement from where we were yesterday, though we're still waiting for those wind chills to get above zero. We sit with a feels like temperature of four below downtown right now. Again, a tad warmer farther south, a tad cooler farther north. Again, still room to improve and we will see that tonight primarily as the wind begins to die down. It's still sustained around 22 miles per hour, but we catch a break in some of that high wind as we head into the evening. Visibility is one of the things that has improved vastly. We saw visibility barely get over a mile across parts of central Indiana yesterday. No concerns there today, and we've even seen the sun come out early. We first expected it may be until tomorrow that we see a breakthrough, but it has shown and it's going to stay out too. Our storm system, by the way, now out back into the polar vortex well into northern Canada. Still lake effect snow though across really all of the Great Lakes, and that's the only effect it has right now other than keeping our wind on the higher side of things. This evening, we'll find our way back down through the single digits. We may slip below zero in some spots, but the focus will be a milder Christmas day, but snow chances on the horizon too. Those details ahead in your full forecast. Tucker, thank you. We have some breaking news tonight. IMPD has released video of an officer involved shooting from September. On September 16th, police were called to West 10th Street and North Holmes Avenue near a daycare for a person shot. That's where a woman was found shot multiple times. She died at the scene. Witnesses say the woman was dropping off her children outside of the daycare when she was killed. Police were later called to 10th and Delaware after a witness say they saw a vehicle matching the description of the one involved in the shooting. Officers said the man was holding a rifle at the time and they shot him when he opened fire. Drop it! Now! Shots fired! Shots fired! Control! The suspect was later identified as 33-year-old Orlando Mitchell. He was taken to the hospital in stable condition. He was released and charged with murder, invasion of privacy, and unlawful possession of a firearm. IMPD tells us they cannot confirm whether the officers involved are still on administrative leave tonight. The investigation into the shooting is still ongoing. The other big story tonight, of course, is the weather. As Tucker just said a bit ago, we are still dealing with temperatures well below the freezing mark all across the state tonight. Let's show you the Indiana travel advisory map from the Department of Homeland Security. You can see here the travel advisories are still in place across Indiana. Many have been downgraded to a watch shown there in orange. That means only essential travel is being advised, such as driving to work or in case of an emergency. Advisories shown in yellow mean people should use caution on the roads. The bitter cold temperatures will still be with us for a couple of more days. Single digit temps and sub zero wind chills are making it much harder for emergency responders to do their jobs. Pike Township firefighters say it was a cumbersome task putting out a house fire at a north side home overnight Thursday. The high winds fed the flames, leaving a family displaced just before Christmas. Fire officials say keeping water flowing is the biggest hurdle. Hydrants are often frozen and equipment can malfunction. The biggest worry is keeping the firefighters themselves from freezing. We are minutes from frostbite and certainly very close to hypothermic conditions. Once the body gets below 95 degrees Fahrenheit, we start in hypothermia and hypothermia as left untreated can become deadly. To avoid that, Wayne Township brings in school buses to act as warming stations for both the firefighters and the people affected. They can also bring in additional crews so firefighters can cycle in and out more often. Indiana Michigan Power is asking customers to help reduce the strain on the power grid by reducing your electricity use, of course, without sacrificing your safety. You can do this by setting your thermostat lower than usual and turning off non-essential lights and appliances. Postponing the use of major appliances like dishwashers and laundry machines can also help. Indiana Michigan Power is asking for customers to do this until 10 a.m. tomorrow. They provide service to customers in the northern part of the state, as well as some central Indiana counties, including Delaware, Tempton and Grant counties. The company says if enough energy is not conserved, 
They'll begin intermittent blackouts to protect the power grid from failing. Meantime, warming centers are available across central Indiana, including in Indianapolis. Several Indy Parks locations are open. The Washington Park is the only location where you can stay overnight. You can call 211 to find the nearest warming center in the Circle City. We also have the entire list at CBS4Indy.com. Being outside for an extended period of time could increase your exposure to frostbite. Doctors say you can develop frostbite within 30 minutes or so. The progression to frostbite begins once your nose, ears, and toes get that tingly feeling. Blisters normally follow. And then all of a sudden you start to see kind of this dusky hue and maybe bleeding blisters and then finally uh, that doesn't come back. And so it's one of those things eventually over the, the span of a couple of weeks, those those digits will turn black and fall off. Doctors are concerned about hypothermia as well. They remind us shivering is OK since it's your body's normal way of generating heat. Hypothermia's symptoms include a lack of shivering and an altered mental state. If you're using space heaters to keep your warm home, your home warm, be careful where you place them. Space heaters are the leading cause of fire deaths by heating equipment. More than half of these deaths were a result of having flammable items too close. Leave at least three feet between the heater and these flammable items. Do not use your oven to heat your home. You don't want to use your stoves or anything like that to heat your home because sometimes we can fall asleep. We leave those things on. Sometimes we have things inside of those and we are forgetful about it. They could cause burns. They could cause fires. Using your gas oven to heat your home could cause carbon monoxide to build up in your house and that could quickly turn deadly. Furnaces across central Indiana will be working hard over the next few days. You can take a few steps to keep it from overloading. You can start by lowering the thermostat by just a few degrees than your normal temperature. Then run the thermostat fan to keep air circulating throughout your home. That'll help reduce hot spots or cold spots and filtered air circulating, circulating more regularly. What definitely is important is to make sure you have a good clean filter and you set your uh, thermostat where, it's, uh, where you're comfortable. And when it's really cold, it's probably the best to leave it there instead of moving it up and down. When it comes to your furnace filter, make sure it's clean. If you are unable to get a new one, you can vacuum your current filter for a temporary fix and then change the new one every 90 days. The winter storm has kept state troopers busy this week. They've responded to over 150 crashes in Indianapolis in the last 48 hours and 17 crashes resulting in injuries. They've also dealt with nearly 30 slide offs and nearly 40 traffic hazards. A trooper was also hit while responding to a crash, but only suffered minor injuries and thankfully was not hospitalized. 99% of the accidents that we work out here, the number one contributing factor is that people are driving too fast for the road conditions. Just because the speed limit says 70 mile an hour on the interstate doesn't mean it's okay to drive 70 mile an hour when there's a snowstorm going on. Troopers are urging Hoosiers to avoid travel on the roads since several roads still remain slick. DPW drivers are working extended shifts to make sure they are out on the roads 24 hours a day through this rough weekend. DPW says it is too cold for the chemicals in the salt to work. Once it gets below 12 degrees, the salt doesn't do much. DPW spokesman Imani Keith says the biggest problem right now is ice and snow blowing across the road. DPW is asking people to stay inside if they can as plows work to keep the snow off the roads. As much as we clear out the snow, we don't want the snow to get blown back into the street because as we're seeing these low freezing temperatures, the snow is not going to melt anytime soon. If you're out in Indy, there's a good chance you'll see a DPW plow. Keith says to give them plenty of space. And remember, these drivers are missing their holiday time with their family to keep the roads clear for the rest of us. Indiana National Guardsmen stepped up to help Hoosiers during the winter storm. Earlier this week, Governor Holcomb asked the Indiana National Guard for volunteers to help during the winter storm. More than 150 guardsmen answered the call. These are photos of the guardsmen assisting drivers who slid off the roads. Guard leaders say guardsmen are constantly going above and beyond to serve our community. 
Still ahead on the news at six, the winter storm that hit Indiana had an effect on people all across the country as they tried to travel for the holiday weekend. We'll have a look at the impacts ranging from auto accidents to weather related injuries. Plus, Congress passing a new bill that changes presidential election rules. Their response to former President Trump's attempts to remain president after losing the 2020 election. And our weather continues to warm, but we have another chance to see snow as it approaches us on Monday. We'll talk about just how much we could see and how long it'll take to warm up in your forecast. We knew it would hit fast. Snow accumulating, bitter cold temperatures. Icy conditions would quickly develop. We knew it would be bitter cold. The wind chill temperature, 30 degrees below zero. You do not want to be outside. And as the storm came in, we dropped now 17 degrees in one hour. We kept you safe. Today is not the day that you want to be stuck on side of any road. Trust the largest weather team in central Indiana. Trust the weather authority. We have got some breaking news. Decision Desk HQ declaring that Senator Raphael Warnick has won. I don't think I've ever actually seen this before where Decision Desk HQ actually beat the watch party here. I feel like you should turn around and yell, hey guys, we're calling it for your guy. Maybe they have the wrong channel on. Whisper to them they might want to change the screen from CNN to News Nation. Any minute now, they're going to realize what we're reporting. News Nation called it first, so there you have it. If you're watching News Nation, you're ahead of the game. Here at the Association of Canard Scott Rolling Powers, we take care of our clients. If you've been injured in an accident, our team is ready to try your case, not just hoping to get a quick settlement and move on. Give our office a call and we'll set up a consultation and discuss all your options. Our experienced team is here for you. Call or visit our website today. If you're injured, we're here for you to get you the money you deserve. We're your team, KSRP. Is that for me? How? Oh, can't wait to see what you got your mother. <laughs> the BMW Road Home Sales Event, on now. Receive a credit of up to $3,250 on select models now through January 3rd. Great deals on pool tables and shuffle boards, arcades and game tables, massage chairs and theater seating, spas and more. From our family to yours, Merry Christmas. News that impacts you begins with a team you can trust. Good evening, I'm Bob Donaldson. And I'm Debbie Knox. Breaking news coming into our newsroom. Here's what we know. Let's begin with a forecast first. Consumer Investigations uncovers a string of bad deals. Here's a great way you can stretch your dollar. Watch CBS 4 News at 11. Well, the brutal winter storm keeps on bringing misery, with large parts of the United States suffering from low record number temperatures. At least 17 storm related deaths have been reported, including cases of exposure to the cold and auto accidents. CBS News correspondent Christian Benavidez reports. New York Governor Kathy Hochul called in the State National Guard to help dig out from the historic blizzard that hit the Buffalo area. Hochul said the entire state is struggling with temperatures that feel below zero with the real chill factored in. This Arctic chill continues to stay over our state. Icy roads and low visibility in large parts of the Midwest, South and Northeast are making driving nearly impossible for countless Americans. At least four people were killed in a pileup involving close to 50 vehicles on the Ohio Turnpike. The storm is forcing airlines to cancel or delay thousands of flights across the U.S., making spending the holiday weekend with loved ones a challenge. I want to eat my mom's famous mac and cheese. This family was waiting to fly out of New York's LaGuardia airport to connect with a cruise ship. We have no choice. If we miss it, that's it. There's yeah. no Christmas no Christmas. Christmas is canceled. And those who lack shelter are feeling the worst of the biting cold blanketing much of the country. In El Paso, Texas, some migrants remained on the streets where they endured temperatures dipping into the teens. But the storm has created something of beauty in upstate New York, turning this lakeside restaurant into what looks like an ice castle. Cristian Benavides, CBS News. 
Congress has passed a $1.7 trillion funding bill, which keeps the government funded. The omnibus bill funds the government through next September. It covers everything from health services to defense spending. It also includes aid for Ukraine, which a growing number of House Republicans oppose. These massive costs are not our responsibility. They're, they're Europe's. This aid is an investment in the future of democracy and the safety of the free world. This was the last vote before a new GOP majority takes control in January. A backup funding bill will keep the government funded through December 30th, as Congress could not get the bill to the president's desk before yesterday's deadline. Congress has also passed changes to the law that controls how it ratifies a winner of a presidential election. The new legislation is an effort to close loopholes that former President Donald Trump and his allies tried to exploit so he could remain president after losing the 2020 presidential election to Joe Biden. The new provisions clarify that the vice president only has a ceremonial role in the process and can't try to block a new president as President Trump unsuccessfully urged Vice President Mike Pence to do. The legislation also makes it harder to object to confirming results of a presidential election and clarifies how electors are named. All right, it has been cold outside and no warmth is in sight. <laughs> Tucker, yeah, it's when been will it be so-called so warm? Yeah, yeah I mean, we, we were talking about a warm-up today, but that's still the temperatures about 20 degrees, even more than 20 degrees below our average. We have made it to 15, though, and in fact, our low temperature made it all the way up to zero today. That's 24 degrees below our average of 24, of course. So we still have a lot of work to do, but we're continuing to trend in the right direction and we're going to see some milder changes ahead too. Temps though across the state still, of course, very cold sitting at 16 in Shelbyville and Terre Haute. Those are our warmest spots. 14 downtown and 11 degrees right now. Kokomo is uh, where we're looking at the coolest weather. Nine degrees below zero, however, is what you're feeling in Kokomo. If you add in that wind and that range is all the way up to about a degree in Bloomington and Terre Haute, four below downtown right now. So we're cold still and a lot of that is thanks to the wind, which is out of the southwest at 22 miles per hour. And while it has calmed down a bit, we haven't had the same type of wind gusts. It's still breezy and making it feel colder than that already cold temperature of 14. Now if we take a look at our satellite and radar, we can see that our sky is much clearer. We saw the sun out today and that was a change we thought may we uh, we'd have to wait until about Monday or, or later tomorrow for. But the clouds have broken a bit quicker and we're continuing to see dry air work in as high pressure sits to the west of us. So again, improvements, right? We're uh, taking baby steps, but making our way in the right direction. If we take a look at temperatures, remember we saw this big purple area. Those are temperatures in the teens and below zero across much of the central and eastern U.S., at least the northern parts. That's now that gray color indicating uh, temperatures in the teens outside, and we still have more warming to do. As you can see, temps to the south and west of us have also um, been picking up. We're back into the 40s and 30s, though still out in Oklahoma and Colorado. But that is a sign, at least, for some warmth to come our direction. Temperatures as we head into tomorrow will start above zero, and during the daytime, we'll find our way back to the mid, if not upper teens, and we'll continue to take steps forward as we head into the new week. Temperatures Monday should return to the mid 20s across most of the state. Feels like temperatures tomorrow also improving. We do begin the day very cold though with those feels like temps 10 to 20 degrees below zero. So don't you know, be caught off guard. It is going to feel very cold and we'll be near that dangerous level to start off the morning. So keep taking those precautions, but we do improve on Monday. Wind also uh, will die down a bit. It's still breezy tomorrow, but those gusts again more moderate. We're not going to see uh, gusts into the 40s. Really should be uh, just a, a breezy but more steady wind kind of day. And here's our sun, by the way. Tomorrow we'll see a good amount of it. We'll be a little bit less the farther northeast you go. But the sun will be fleeting because on Monday we have clouds that will return and even a chance for some light snow. This primarily brushes through the south and western part of the state. But I do think we're going to see at least some light snow across uh, even our northern areas and areas to the east as well. So uh, some snow showers through the day on Monday could even continue into early Tuesday morning will not be a lot, but enough that you could see uh, up to an inch across parts of Indiana, though that will mainly be again in the south and western areas. Local uh, amounts could be up to two inches, though I do think that's going to be definitely the higher end for this snowfall. So nothing substantial, but a little more snow on the ground. Uh, we'll see those temperatures warm quickly, as mentioned, through the beginning of the week. And by the time we get to Wednesday, we'll be back in the 40s and could even see a stretch of days in the 50s as we close out the month of December. 
Thanks, Tucker. It's a Christmas miracle. Coming up in sports, a look ahead to Monday Night Football with a number of offensive changes for the horseshoe. Plus, Miles Turner's future has always been in question, but some reported answers for the Pacer Center. I'll have that story and more after the break. What makes best reviews the best reviews? They have an unbiased team that researches products in real-world situations to get reliable recommendations on pretty much everything. Call that a plasma sword? So you can be confident that whatever you're buying is right for you, no matter what life throws at it. Like your daughter Clementine, for example. For the best reviews, go to bestreviews.com. Seriously, before you buy anything, ever. AES Indiana is dedicated to providing you with smart energy solutions that power our lives. Our energy efficiency programs help you save energy and money. From rebates on lighting and smart thermostats to appliance pickup and recycling, you can take advantage of cleaner, more cost-effective energy solutions right here, right now. AES Indiana. We are accelerating the future of energy together. <laughs> Surprise! It's a new Buick. Mm -hmm. You got me a new Buick? Oh. And there are more guests inside. You got me the head up display. Wow! The massaging seat. Okay, okay, what next? Alexa, turn on holiday lights. This year, give the gift of technology in every Buick SUV. It's the holidays. Get 3.99% APR and no monthly payments for 90 days on these Buick SUV models. Immediately, I knew I was hurt. I had excruciating headaches for months, and I didn't know how my health was going to turn out. I figured I better get some legal representation. I called Hensley. At Hensley, we work on a contingency fee. We don't get paid until we get a settlement for you. With Hensley, there's no fee until they recover. If you're unsure whether you have a case or not, feel free to call us. We'll let you know. Don't judge your own case. Let a professional do that. You'll be glad you did. It happens. Hire Hensley. Yep, we've got you covered. Sell, buy home loans, OfferPad can help you do it all. In fact, we can bundle everything for you. Sell this home, buy your next, and include a home loan. You could save thousands. Um, uh, can you tell our son he needs to find his own place? You made me. I am your son. Do you even love me anymore? Who's going to make me breakfast? No matter what your real estate need is, OfferPad can help you with literally almost everything. OfferPad, your all-in-one way to sell, buy, mortgage a home. The Colts held their final practice of the week this afternoon ahead of Monday night's matchup against the Chargers. The team ruled out Kenny Moore and Kylan Granson both with ankle injuries. For the first time since third time since 1998, the Colts will start a third quarterback in a season. Nick Foles was named QB1 against the Chargers with Sam Ellinger as his backup. Foles hasn't started since week 16 of 2021, completing 24 of 35 passes for 250 yards and a touchdown for the Bears. When asked if he was expecting this move, the Super Bowl MVP admitted he didn't see it coming. It's a 180. Um, I couldn't have expected anything that happened this year. Um, you know, Frank Reich, one of the best coaches I've ever been around. That's the big reason I came here, and I love him to death. And you know, everything that's transpired is not what I expected, but that's sort of how life goes. It has allowed us as players to bond in a unique way through different trials and tribulations that you can only bond through, you know, going through this. And uh, there's a lot of bright spots spots in this year um, with the people you get to meet, with the people you get to go to work with, and. Our ultimate goal right now is to finish it strong and finish it the right way. There will also be changes to the Colts' backfield with Jonathan Taylor on IR. Last week, Zach Moss and Deion Jackson were on a rotation. Interim head coach Jeff Saturday is not committing one or the other to start against the Chargers. It'll be a game time. We're still working through. We got another day, so we, have, we haven't finalized what it's going to look like. I know we're going to rotate, James, so from our perspective, whoever runs out there first doesn't, doesn't change much. We'll, we'll have rotation back there, so, um, but we're, we'll continue to look at it, and, and we'll make that. We probably won't make the decision, really, until, uh, until we figure out what we're going to do on Monday. Against the Vikings, Moss carried for a career-high 24 times for 81 yards. Jackson had 13 carries for 55 yards, losing a fourth-quarter fumble. Miles Turner has been the center of trade talks for years, but he might not be on the move. The Athletic Shams Chartania reported the Pacers and Turner have begun contract negotiation talks. The 26-year-old center is in the final year of his four-year $70 million guaranteed deal. 
Scott Agnes of Fieldhouse Files weighs in on what a future contract for Turner might look like. This is probably his last big contract, being a uh, a 26-year-old big man. And so he's going to want to capitalize on that. I think the Pacers certainly would be interested in bringing him back. The question right now with Miles in particular is that what number could the Pacers and Miles be comfortable with? Could they be willing to pay $30 million per year? 25 I don't think he'd be happy or take anything below $25 million. That'd be $7 million more than he makes this year. Turner is currently averaging career bests in both scoring and rebounding. Pacers have yet to comment on the rumors, but an extension must be done by March 1st. Tucker has a final check on the forecast and has a look at Santa. That's right. Yeah, we're tracking more than just weather on the radar tonight, of course. It's the big night for the big man, and we're tracking him on our Santa radar, our tool here in the CBS4 studio. He's in Senegal right now, out in western Africa. That's a good 4,450 miles away from us, but don't worry. Still early in the night. He's still got about, uh, let's see, five hours, 35 minutes to get here. So I'm sure he's on his way. You know, he does it pretty fast, too. And he's got a taste of home here as well. It's cold, and this weather came straight out of the North Pole, in fact, and it's going to stick around a little bit, too. We stay in the upper teens tomorrow, and eventually we do begin to warm, but you'll notice that it will take some time. Monday, we stay with highs in the 20s. Same deal on Tuesday, and by the way, Monday, we could see another coating of snow on top of what's already out there. But as we get later into the week, we're going to see some big changes in our weather and a huge warm up as well. It's that time of year when you can have some big swings between different weeks. And that's why we see temperatures reach the 40s again on Wednesday. Even a stretch of days in the 50s is possible towards the end of the week. But I will say that will come with some rain. So our weather still all over the place as we're sitting here in December. Uh, I mean, I personally am glad we got the snow so we have a white Christmas. But uh, it's not going to last long either. So if you're not as big a fan, you know, don't have to worry I, about that. There's I something for everybody, I yeah, guess. I love the snow. Yeah, I absolutely. Too. I'm loving it. I don't like those cold temperatures, though. I'm right, I'm with right there. there. Yeah. yeah. I'm so glad we all agree. Winter on Monday, spring on Friday. That's right. All right, that's going to do it for us. We're coming back with more news tonight at 11. You should, too. Until then, Merry Christmas.